28th. This is the House Education Committee in the Vermont House of Representatives. Um, we have a couple of things to do today. First, I just wanted to give you an update on our discussion about district budgets, and then we will take up um, a bill to delay uh, Act 173, um, which will be in the House tomorrow. So just um, as people know, the um, Senate has come forward with a plan to um, provide a, a default budget should a district be unable to pass a budget. Their default budgets would be um, to, to adopt uh, last year's budget, the 2020 budget, um, and then they can continue to vote. We had worked on another option. We are continuing to work on that option, um, but at the moment, our discussions were because we have an agreement that given the challenges of remote voting, um, we are looking to have agreement between the two bodies, between our two committees, before we bring something to the floor. And that's primarily due to the complexity of trying to deal with a, a vote with 150 people voting remotely. Um, so we are continuing those conversations. Um, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a plan forward yet, is what I would say. So are there any questions on that before we go on? I realize we have two members of um, the House Ways and Means Committee in the room and wanted to see if you had any questions or thoughts. Oh, I've got to get my little question thing up here. Um, I see George Tell, do you have a question? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm wondering, um, <coughs> Is there uh, progress with the Senate? Um, the you know the the House plan makes so much more sense than the Senate plan. I'm just wondering <clears throat> where the holdups coming in terms of um, you know coming to some agreement. Yeah, at the moment, um, the Senate has not been interested in um, looking at by the last conversation was not interested in an alternative proposal. Um, they, and, and I'm, I'm please, um, Jim, step in if I'm, I'm misrepresenting this, but my understanding is what they like about their proposal is that they at least have a past budget, which is last year's budget, so that they like the fact that people have actually voted on something. So that's why they, they prefer their approach. Um, the approach that we've been discussing in the house. Is, is that accurate, Jim? Am I, reflect, am I reflecting there? Um, I, ha I haven't had those conversations uh, with Senator Rich. I'm not sure exactly what his rationale is. Okay. Um, that, was, that was my understanding. Um, ours was approach has been looking more at what we can do to stabilize these communities in a, a, a time where voting is far more complicated and uh, it, it, our concern is it's putting them in a different class uh, of, of uh, moving forward. They're, they're definitely functioning farther behind than the districts that actually had an opportunity to, pa to pass a budget. Um, I realize that that doesn't really clarify anything. Um, there's still some hope that we might be able to get some movement, um, but I'm still working on that. Um, Sarita, Austin. Yep. Um, I'm wondering if the Senate and, and our committee agree on the 4% uh, inflator for last, you know, over last year's. That, that's really important to me because it sounded like it was really important to the people, the stakeholders who testified last week. When I observed the Senate committee, um, they had rejected that. Um, I don't know if there's still flexibility on that, but they, they rejected that at the time. Uh, thank you. Okay, anybody else? So that's, that's where we are at this point. And thank I apologize. You. <laughs> So with that, we will move on to the next uh, issue, which is the delay to Act 173. And um, where this stands right now is that passed the Senate 
It's been messaged over. It will be uh, sent to our committee tomorrow. Um, I, we will vote on it tomorrow. I, what I want to do is do kind of a straw poll today. I think we've kind of done one, but I want to just make sure that we're okay. And then we will vote on it tomorrow. And then um, Representative Cooperly will be presenting it on the floor. So with that, um, Jim, could you uh, update us on where we are with, uh, it's Act 173 that has a number, what's the number, it's 363? Uh, yeah, sure. So it's um, the record of Jim Danbury, that's console. Um, let me go out there and fill here, hold on. Um, Kate, could I interrupt for just a quick second? Yes, please. It's just a technological thing. Um, I don't, I was just on the streaming site and I don't see that this is in fact streaming. Uh, it, it, may have... it, it says it's, it says it's live on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't see it, but it could yeah. be a technical issue on my side. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm having a lot of freeze ups here. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I can't, I, I think that it's not really working right. I mean, I can't, I can't see anybody. Okay, well, I, I on on my my screen, I've got that we are live on YouTube. Right, but I'm on YouTube, and it's not showing up. It's I know it's delayed. Yeah, it's, it's usually not this far delayed. Okay, Avery will Wait. check. I think we got some kind of Zoom malfunction going on. Everybody's now. Kind of it, now it is up. Let's see if it's. Okay. I was looking. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's fine. The audio is, is coming through fine, it looks like, uh, but the video is having some trouble, which I think we're probably all experiencing. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm doing fine here. I can see everybody and I can hear everybody and it, it, the thing does say live on, on YouTube, so I do believe we're live. We are taking up, um, is it S363? Is that what the number is, Jim? Uh, S363. Uh, 43. S343. S343. And this is the bill that we've been talking about uh, in our committee related to delaying implementation of Act 173. It has passed the Senate. It's on its way to us. Um, we will, it will be in our committee, be sent to our committee tomorrow. My intention is for us to vote on it and um, send it back and Representative Cooperly will uh, present it on the floor. So, uh, Jim Demaray, can you present the bill? To yeah, us? so we need to open the bill up so people can see it. I'm sure this is going to work today. Let's try it. Okay, so we have been through this bill numerous times, and the last time we went through it, you heard testimony from. Um, uh, John Carroll, uh, Chair of the State Board of Education, uh, he wanted some changes made to some of the rulemaking um, timing. Um, so that's now been inc include, included in this, in this bill. And also to um, give the advisory group one more year of life, uh, it's now in this bill as well. So let's go to the sections that you haven't seen. Um, we can go back and review uh, more if you want, but we haven't seen, we can go to uh, page five, section four. Uh, uh, yeah, just a, a, a little higher there, Avery, if you could. Right there, perfect, okay. So this is amending uh, Act 173, which uh, created the Census-Based Funding Advisory Group. And what it does um, is it extends the life of the group. Uh, it was going to cease on June 30, 2022. Now it's June 30, 2023. And if you scroll down a bit further, you'll see that the number of meetings they can have in a fiscal year has been increased from um, eight meetings to 12, 12 meetings because I understand they've run out of um, um, meetings in the last year. 
uh, that, that would be compensated. So they now have 12 meetings for which they would receive compensation per year. Um, therefore, the appropriation goes up um, from $5,376 to $9,018 uh, per year. So that's what that section does. If we can scroll down, um, Avery, to um, page seven, um, section nine, right bottom of the page. Oh, right here. Okay. Different pagination. Okay, great. So, uh, a couple of things here. Um, the state board uh, mentioned that they have the um, update to its rule series 2200, which is the series that deals with approved independent schools. Um, and, um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me go to B first, B first, uh, and then A. B first, um, he mentioned that the State Board of Education uh, rule series 1300 and 2360 which are the ones that would implement the census grant are out for public comment. And that comment period would expire this, this summer. And he wanted to ex ex extend that period until the end of the year, given the, uh, the state of emergency. So B extends the comment period until the end, end of the year and adjusts the other timelines accordingly under the um, Administrative Procedures Act. And then A, um, there was no date in Act 173 by which the state board had to initiate rulemaking for approved independent schools. And remember that um, Act 173, in addition to uh, changing funding from reimbursement to census grant, also had a separate part of it, which required approved independent schools to um, enroll students on IEP if the uh, supervisory union for that student recommends it. But there's no date by which that had, the rulemaking had to be done. So he would like to have rulemaking uh, initiated on, on before June 30, 2021. And that's what this one does. And then if you scroll up a little bit, Avery, to section eight, and we're going out of, out of order, um, just go up a little bit higher, right here. In Act 73, there was a small piece of uh, law that required that the state board um, adopt um, or uh, review and update its rules for uh, independent schools um, in order to speed the process for getting approval in, in various uh, specific special education categories. So you, you might recall that debate a couple of years ago that um, one of the issues that independent schools had or have with complying with new requirements is it takes too much time. If they're forced to take on a student who is on IEP, there are 13 disability cat categories under law and they have to be approved for that category. And the approval process was uh, taking too long. So this was designed to have the state board um, somehow get that process sped up uh, so that they can actually do that. Uh, that date uh, was November 1, 2020. It's now uh, been moved to June 3, 2021, which corresponds to the date we just went through in Section 9, uh, when the state board has to basically update its rules uh, for approved independent schools. So um, those are the changes to those dates. So aside from those changes to dates, which really deal with rules, rulemaking, um, and uh, the additional year for the census basic uh, a, a group, um, sorry, the um, advisory group. Uh, aside from that, the bill is the same as you saw last time. So unless there are questions overall on the bill, that's all, all I had to say, but I'm happy to go through more if you'd like to. So, uh, Larry Kupalay. <laughs> Unmute, Larry. I, think it, I have to get used to that mute button. Does this have to go to appropriations before it goes anywhere? Well, I mean, uh, 
it does have a higher appropriation to it. So, so I'm not sure how they would deal with it um, in this in this uh, time period, uh, given what's going on. But I, usually, so, so it comes it comes to our committee tomorrow. Um, we vote on it. It, it I can I can't see it going anywhere until it goes through appropriations, if I'm not mistaken. Kate, any? I have sent that language to our uh, contact in appropriations. I will follow up uh, with them on, on that plan, whether it's gonna need to go to them afterwards. They are, they are aware that there's an appropriation in it. Okay, thank you. Sarita Austin. I'm just wondering about the public comment uh, time. Is there a way remotely that the public, I mean, I'm sure there is, I'm just curious what it is, how the public will provide input remotely. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how that will work actually, um, Rip Austin. The, um, right now his concern was he can't really comment at this point, obviously. I think he's thinking, thinking that um, as your progresses, there'll be more chance for people to meet and make comments and whatnot, but that's, who knows, I guess is the answer. Okay. The um, members of the board uh, come from some pretty varied uh, experience as well, representing uh, groups that have an interest in this bill. This law, Larry Coopley, are you still there? Or are you, you your question got answered? Yeah, I'm. I'm fine. I should have put my hand down. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. So just looking at everybody, then um, just taking a straw poll. Just raise your hand if you're comfortable with this bill as written. Just raise your hand if you're comfortable with it. Is there anybody that? Anybody that is not comfortable with it? Okay. Okay, good. Um, we will take a formal vote tomorrow on this. And so Kathleen, that will be you. And you, you, have you got you, the arrangement on that? <laughs> do you have, do you By it? tomorrow, I will have gotten the arrangement. Great, great. Thank you. Do we have a scheduled time, Kate, that that will take place? Um, I have to check that out with with um, with the the clerk's office on how that will work. I'm not quite sure myself, but I will sort that out before tomorrow. So I see um, we do have. So yes, Jim. What, what time is the house on the floor tomorrow? Is it nine o'clock? I think it's ten thirty, isn't it? Is there an all house meeting at nine thirty? No. Um, I've got I've got ten thirty tomorrow morning. Yes, ten thirty, and then again at one. So I'm assuming what we'll do is probably meet between um, shortly after the floor and take a formal vote. Um, and Avery and 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 um, Kathleen will have it all figured out on how the voting works, and and then I'll sort out whether it has to go to appropriations. Just so it's Kate, a little confusing. The House calendar does say nine a.m. It but did. our Zoom invitation says 1030. So Kate, our committee vote will be after the first floor session. Yes, we have to have possession of the bill to actually vote on it. So we will get possession of it tomorrow and then we'll okay. vote. Okay, um, I need to look through my emails. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's, uh, who's got a lot of unemployment emails right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I need to try to look through my emails and find, um, am I, do I check in with Avery or, or um, Bill on committee voting procedures or both? You know, I, I got a nice um, response from uh, Rebecca. So let me send that to you as well. Okay, if you could just resend, um, that would be great because a few things have gotten lost. Yeah. Not lost, uh, hard to find. Let me put it that way. Yes, exactly, buried. Buried, <laughs> yeah. thanks. Okay, thank you. So that at this point is, is our business for today. Um, I am in conversation, uh, Representative 
Conlon and James and I had a conversation with um, the president of the New England Board of Higher Education, um, asking them to uh, help us understand uh, trends, future trends in um, higher education, in post-secondary education. So uh, we will have a joint committee meeting with Commerce and Economic Development, looking at just getting a better idea about what's happening around the country, what's happening around New England, what's the, what are the trends in post-secondary education? So that's gonna take a little while to set up because they wanna they want to pull together and organize some information for us. I understand that uh, Georgia has um, some interesting things that they have done. Um, I think there are a couple of other states that might be of interest. Um, but to clarify, I know people have had some interest in, in this conversation. Our committee at this point will not be weighing in on the decisions related to um, what's happening at the Vermont State Colleges. Uh, that, that will, our committee will not be looking at their finances, will not be looking at their enrollment, will be not be looking and trying to come up with a plan for the colleges. Um, we are, I figured our role might just better be to get a sense of what the trends are in higher education. And that might be a more useful use of our time. And as far as the other bill that um, still looking for an avenue for, um, for the budgets delayed for the 19 districts. Um, at this point, it's um, the Senate is firm on their position um, to, to, and I'm repeating this because I believe we weren't live before. Um, they are, they are, they are, they are prepared to offer their solution to us at this point are not um, interested in further testimony on the work that our committee has done. So anything else? Sarita, do you have something? Do you want to say? Or is yep. that... Can we send you questions to possibly ask that, uh, you know, the, the group on, um, you know, on post-secondary education, can we submit questions to you to possibly ask them? Sure. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna keep it at the pretty much 50,000 foot level. Um, we're not going to be, we're not going into the buildings right now at Vermont State Colleges. Will the Senate be at 50,000 feet too, Senate Ed? Excuse me? Will Senate education also stay away? I, I didn't understand that. Will Senate, will the Senate Education Committee also be at 50,000 feet or are they going to be diving in? Oh, on the Vermont State Colleges? Uh, I don't know. I haven't had a conversation about the Vermont State Colleges. Um, Kayla Belder. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me while I'm not having yep. great uh, success this morning, but hopefully you can. So um, can you just reiterate, Kate, the Senate's recommendation on the budgets? Again, I think you said that sure. a little earlier, but we weren't on the record. If you could just give the quick summary of their recommendation, that would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, the Senate, the Senate, uh, the Senate's plan is that if you do not, and, and Jim, I should probably let you do it, but I'll let me see if I've got it here. The Senate's plan is that if you do not have a budget by July, by June 30th, then um, they will have a default budget, the Agency of Education will give them a default budget, which will be last year's budget. So that will be their budget. They'll be able to set tax rates on that budget. And then um, the, the communities can continue to vote. And if they uh, pass another budget, that will supplant the budget that was set by the agency, which is last year's budget. That's what, that's what their position okay. is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And presumably they've heard testimony from the Vermont School Boards Association, similar to what we heard. Um, my understanding is they have received a letter from the um, State Board of Education and which was supported by the uh, Superintendents Association. I am not aware of any testimony that they have taken. I have not in any committee meetings I've seen, I have not 
seen any testimony, um, but that that's my current understanding is that they do have a letter. They okay. Do have, they do have a memo. Um, Kathleen James. Thanks, Kate. Um, so considering the kind of constraints of how we're working now, what, what will be the path forward in trying to come to compromise um, between our, our, uh, our idea of what might be the best path forward and the Senate's idea of what might be the best path forward? It looks like the options before us are, um, we accept the Senate's proposal, we hold out with them accepting our proposal or negotiating that position or nothing happens, at which point that would mean that um, they're left with the borrowing 87% until they get a vote. Sarita Austin? And, and Jim, if I, it, it helps me to kind of put it in English, but to have the lawyer right there to say, well, you know, it's not quite right, I think was, <laughs> please. You're, you're, per you're perfect. Okay. Um, I hope that's not in a President Trump, Trump sort of perfect, but um, I'm sorry, we're on, you were on YouTube, aren't we? Sarita Austin, you had a question? Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if it would be possible since Brad James and I believe Secretary French both support the 4% inflator, if someone in the Senate could give a rationale as to why they wouldn't support that. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out. Uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to your senators. Okay, thank you. I, I am not choosing to. Um, I am not choosing to reach out to the members of that committee because I want to be respectful of the chair. Any other questions or concerns? Um, Kate, I don't have my hand up, but yeah. um, this is our topic of conversation Friday. Is that correct? Excuse me? Is this our topic of conversation on Friday? Um, I will let you know if we're going to have, well, I will let you know if we're going to meet on Friday. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, at this point in time, we will meet Wednesday. Um, we'll let you know when that's going to happen, probably right after floor. That's okay with everybody. Um, we will then have the bill and we will vote on that. And then on Wednesday, I, I will keep you posted as to whether we're going to meet on Thursday. I mean, on Friday. At this point, I don't have an agenda. Um, Larry Coopley. Yeah, is there, um, we have members from Ways and Means with yeah. us this morning. Are, do we have any comments from them or any recommendations or suggestions that would be different from the Senate bill? Don't be afraid to speak up. Um, hi, it's Robin. I don't feel like I'm in a position to say anything different. This is brand new news to me, so I'm just taking it in and I think your chair knows what the options are. I expect that our chair, if, if she doesn't already know what's happening, we'll know very shortly and we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Anybody else? Okay. Bill, did you wanna say something? Yeah, um, can you tell me what the vote was from that Senate committee? Um, I understand that it was unanimous, but it hasn't left the committee yet. Okay. Um, there is, there is, you can, you can watch, um, you can, <laughs> what everybody's looking for is to watch another uh, YouTube Zoom meeting. Um, but I, I, we're looking, we're looking at our options. And with that, I guess we, uh, we will adjourn. Um, everybody be ready to meet right after.